City Morning Show. It's a lovely, beautiful Thursday, folks. Thursday, the 22nd day of October 2020. We're here with you, hoping you're doing fine, hoping you're doing great, and waking up to this brand new, beautiful morning, this brand new, beautiful day, another day that the Lord has lent us. Thursday, folks, Thursday, a very lovely, beautiful morning here in the country of Belize. We are waking up and we have been lent another day. And this morning, we are linking with our sister in Delve this morning. Good morning, Delve. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Cheki, and to everyone listening. All right, morning. How are you feeling today? You know what, Mr. Cheki? I mean, I complain. <laughs> I'm alive. I am breathing. And praise God. And how are you? Well, we have to stay on the positive side of things, you know. So that's it. When challenges come to you, it's for, to make yourself a better person. So you you tackle the challenges and you continue to be a better person, right? All right. All okay. Right. Let's give thanks then. All right. Let us give thanks. This morning, the verse is taken from Proverbs 25, verse 1 and 22, and it says, If your enemy is hungry, give him bread to eat, and if he is thirsty, Give him water to drink, for so you will heap coals of fire on his head, and the Lord will reward you. And my dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I just give you thanks this day for a, another blessing, Lord, another gift of just being able to breathe, being able to be alive. And this morning, oh God, I just pray that you may please be with us throughout this day. Please keep guiding us. And I just pray, oh God, for every person that you are not through with yet, those who may be facing a challenge in their life, those who may be having marital issues, those who may be having, you know, issues with their children, I pray for them. I pray, oh God, that you may grant them peace. And I pray, oh God, that you may just draw them nearer to you. Draw them nearer to you. For you are the one who sticks closer than a brother. You are the one who sticks closer than a friend. So today I just pray a special blessing upon every person who has ears to listen this morning. And for those who don't have the privilege to listen to this station, oh God, I pray that you may still shower them with your blessing. And I pray that wherever they are, that your word may be mentioned to them. I give you thanks for all that you continue to do in and through our lives. In the mighty name of Christ Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Blessings to the great Almighty. A lovely, beautiful Amen. morning, lovely, beautiful day. And like we say, when you bring in those um, prayers, those give thanks prayers, and every morning, it always seems like it's a, it's a brand new day. Everything sounds fresh and new. It is a brand new day. His mercy is refreshed every day. And the Bible says, you know, every day we, we, we open our eyes, Mr. Chekida. A good lad, and you know, pick up the little pieces they find yesterday. Now, a fresh day, and then we uh, and a new start to make way. You know, continue pick up and, and keep moving, even though lead things will happen. You know, we don't just want to neglect things we go on in our life because being in denial, no good neither. Yeah, so let's not, you know? yeah, that's true. That so let's let's not waste this day because when today let's is gone, it's good. gone, right? Yes. No? So, we just try to make the most out of our Okay. So. Well, let's go into a poem for this morning then. All right. This one I have is entitled, In Between Solid and Vulnerable. And it, it goes like this. <clears throat> In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Jump high, jump low. He was not the job at all, and he'd still not be a fraud. He spoke into nothing, and all things came to be. He made all things perfectly from that which only he could see. So powerful and so mighty, he is Lord above all, yet he is merciful and kind to meet us when we fall. He made himself a burning bush to show Moses the way. He caused water to flow from the desert. For a woman, Hagar, one day. Though she didn't know him for the God that he is, for the sake of her child, to him she did cry. He heard and responded, lest the child would have died. He is mighty and steadfast when he sent the plagues, 
and harden Pharaoh's heart that he may see God's way, that his people had to be set free. The Lord goes above and beyond. Every time I, I, I would get the opportunity to, to share about the relationship with God, it's like simple with relationship with people that we can see. The less you talk with someone, the less you, you get, the less you know them, the less yeah. you have a connection with them. True, the true. more you talk to them, the more you find out how they feel, how they think, the closer you get connected to that person. The same thing with God. Right, you right. You see him physically, but he left us his word. He left us how to pray. And we don't have to be perfect. None of us are. No big fancy words. Even if you're praying in the morning, Lord, thank you, I could breathe. That is a way that God says, you know what? All right, this one have me in my, in my mind, in my heart. That I am welcome there. I will stay there. You okay. Know what? God wants to be with us. Yep. So it's it's up to us, right? It is up to us. He has done, Jesus died on the cross 2,000 plus years ago. To give you one chance now for John Nero. Yeah. And we have so many chances, right? So many, so many chances. So many different times to say, yes, this is the way to go, right? Yes, yeah, so many. And you know what the thing with God, you know, you won't come yet, but there will be a, a, a KDA. I don't know if you know that this long there was KDA, because it's a thing that the days are now over 100 and odd years. You know what they preach, they preach, they preach. Everybody, they laugh and stand. These are when they build the ark. When KDA come and they start to rain, only eight people may save. Yeah. You know they have a song from the group D Revelation where it says some people do what they want, say what they want when they and then okay. But when P they, they come but they want pay. And then they pay, pay the pay, pay, pay they pay the you know. There will be a pay day, Mr. Checky. Yeah. You know, and enough of frightening or what it, it is the truth. Yeah. Just like with your pick now, you talk and you talk and you talk, but then continue to they say you want discipline then. Yeah. Because we love them, we just want to lift them. So. One day, one day, Miss Betty and pull la cha cha cha. You know? Ah, yeah, yeah, <laughs> one yeah. day. And <laughs> yeah. she pull la cha 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 one, two, lot of times. You know, so. We are still here. Praise yeah. God. Yes. Well, thanks very much once again, Delva, and we link up tomorrow morning, right? Have yourself a good one and all the ah. best to the family, right? The good Lord, so will it tomorrow, and all the best to you are. All right, thanks. Take care. Folks, we will be going into the weather report right now from the Belize Met Service, and we'll be sharing that with you right here this morning. And we trust and hope that you are blessed with that opener right here this morning. And make us see what the weather look like for today, because it might take us all the way into the weekend, what um, they will be reporting this morning. But then um, we need to link with our friends at the Belize Met Service. As I opened this page this morning, I saw the late, great queen of Creole Brock Down music, Leela Vernon. This is around the time that she died, you know, around October timing. I remember that clearly. So um, to the family, you know, all the way there in PG and to all the Belizeans who were great fans of Leela Vernon, this was a time when the month, and I not really remember what date it was, but this was the month that she passed and now folks we are checking in with the Belize Met Service and let's see we don't really have the okay we have the recording right here of the forecaster on duty and we join them at this time as we say good morning to the forecaster on duty there at the Belize Met Service good morning generally fair conditions prevail over the country the 24-hour forecast sunny with some cloudy spells today and partly cloudy tonight Showers and thunderstorms will be isolated. High temperatures today will reach 89 degrees Fahrenheit along the coast, 91 degrees Fahrenheit inland, and 77 degrees Fahrenheit in the mountains. Low temperatures tonight will be 77 degrees Fahrenheit along the coast, 72 degrees Fahrenheit inland, and 67 degrees Fahrenheit in the hills. So winds over the open sea will be light and variable, and sea conditions will be slight. Low tides occur at 9.07 this morning and 8 p.m. tonight. High tides at 3.30 this afternoon and 2.21 tomorrow morning. The moon will rise at 11.47 this morning and set at 11.06 tonight. 
Sunset is at 5.25 this evening and sunrise at 5.40 tomorrow morning. The extended forecast for Friday and Friday night. Mainly fair conditions with showers and thunderstorms being isolated at first. Then activity will increase slightly, mainly along the coast during the night. The sargasm update. Satellite observations show a few sargasm mats offshore the country. There is a medium chance that these mats could drift onshore during this week, producing minimal impacts. And in the tropical weather outlook, at 6 a.m., the center of Hurricane Epsilon was located near latitude 30.6 north and longitude 61.3 west, or about 385 miles east-southeast of Bermuda. Epsilon was moving to the northwest at 7 miles per hour, with maximum sustained winds of 100 miles per hour. Also, a trough of low pressure over the Western Caribbean Sea is producing some disorganized showers and thunderstorms. The system has a low chance of some slow development in the next few days while it moves northeastward near western or central Cuba. And this has been this morning's weather report from the National Meteorological Service. Thanks to the forecaster on duty. So, folks, we will be having fair weather today. Well, every weather are good weather, you know, because um, the weather, when it comes to the weather, when it rains, it's good for some persons. When the sun is shining, it's good for others. We will be having Minister Aragon right here, right here this morning. Minister Aragon will be on the on the show today. But folks, um, there there is some new development when it comes to capturing of prisoners. A release that came out from the Commissioner of Police this morning, and um, we have everything here that that they are showing us, but. We want to share this release with you all that came out this morning. I think one, one, two, three, three prisoners were were captured. I think between last night, and the commissioner sent out this notification. They say good morning. Escaped prisoners, namely Kendall Flores and Luke Bowen, were caught last night on the Placencia Peninsula. They will be charged and taken back to the Colby Foundation. This now leaves us with seven escapees at large. I thought we, I thought all of them were captured already, but there was there is still seven more out there. Seven more, so it continues. And I saw three here, so probably that might be, that might be, um, that might be six. But the commissioner say that it's. Um, it's seven. All right, so folks, we going to continue right here. We'll be taking a break. We will be take, taking a break, and we will be back right here after these messages right here on North Television Channel 10. Six cylinders to pure potential and better performance. Looks like it vibrates. You think it could be the horsepower? With a quart of oil and the calibration of the injectors, it will start to get the washers again on the street. We take a motor to its optimal level. We speak machine. Rush France. Making the world function. Authorized agent, German Vega and Sons. Telephone number 322-3625. Email germanvega at btl.net. Meet Johnny. Johnny paid $4,000 to take a train around his house. Johnny then sold his house and all its contents for $3,000. Johnny is a fool. Don't be Johnny. The PUP spent $44 million of public funds to dredge out the Port of Belize. The PUP then sold the Port of Belize and all its assets for $40 million to Lucas Pat. Luke defaulted on his loans to Belize Bank. Now Michael Ashcroft owns the port. The PUP. Do you trust them with your future? Vote UDP because your future matters. Worried about wearing that sleeveless dress? A sexy bikini? Due to unsightly ingrown hairs, razor bumps, or burn on your legs, underarms, or bikini lines? With 10 Skin, those worries are a thing of the past. Just apply 10 Skin and you'll be surprised at how quickly it works. So regain the confidence to go short. Go sleeveless, go ten skin. Visit us online at go10skin.com.
distributed by Vegas Imports. 214.6 acres in Tiger Creek, Orange Walk, 3,000 acres, 0.961 hectares, to Jaime Bresenio and John Bresenio, 827.848 square yards to John Bresenio, 5.4 acres to John Bresenio and Jaime Bresenio, 20 acres in Progreso to John Bresenio, to John Bresenio again, 6 acres in Progreso, the other Progreso you got with? Our economy benefits when goods and mobile services get to their destination quickly. When citizens are able to travel without frustration and undue hurdles, everyone benefits as well. The government of Belize is happy to announce the imminent upgrades to the Carzal Sartaneja Road. 27 miles of road will be upgraded to paved standards and will include the replacement of two ferries with new bridges. Why is it that we're going to invest in Sartaneja? Why is it that we have to take 50 million US dollars to invest in an area where we do not have a political territory? We believe that as a government, we have to provide a service to all Belizeans. Well, this for the village of Junos is a big, big advantage both ways. Sometimes when we got sickness, we got people sick at the clinic, the women, when we reach at the ferry, can pass 45 minutes after we so now this, this road will benefit whole village, you know, Chartinia, Caprabang, a part of Progreso. Well, it's really, really important for us. I know that our village is not so much developed with tourism because it's a remote village. And for that reason, we don't have a lot of tourism over there. But now with this upgrading of the road and the pavement of the road, I think that I believe and I think that it will be much, much beneficial for us and for everybody. More for Belizeans, more for Belize, the government of Belize, moving Belize forward. We have an 8-cylinder powerful engine disguised as an aluminum alloy that spins at 8,000 revolutions per minute. It goes like this. You think it's a turbo? No, with the cleaning of injectors and a change of oil, we will run more efficient and grind. For those who understand the engine like it talks to you, we speak machine. Rush France, making the world function. Authorized agent, German Vega and Sons. Telephone number 322-3625. Email germanvega at btl.net. On election day, let's make the right choice. Re-elect Eloyo Aragon Jr. With you always, leadership that works. Representing Orange Walk East Because our future matters Not even a question Who may vote it be? You already know we voting for the UDP Cause they are the best one In the driver's seat So go put your ex right next so over the son of the East Yeah, we talking like about who? Aragon, Aragon, Aragon We talking like about who? Aragon, Aragon The number one we talking like about who? Aragon Aragon. One and only son now there of the East, yeah. We voting for Aragon equality. Voting Aragon, he's the number one, yeah. Voting Aragon, he get the job done, yeah. And we so blessed, and know the Aragon bring progress. Hard working, no in a no mess, and know the Aragon show to yes. Leadership that works, then the Aragon don't come to play. Put the people first, then the Aragon have we are Sugar City Morning Show for today, Thursday. It's a lovely, beautiful morning, lovely, beautiful day. 
Today we have the East in the house and we have Minister Aragon representing. Good morning, Minister. Welcome. Well, good morning, Chiki. It's a pleasure being here, you know. Yes. And of course, I, I want to say good morning to all of our viewers out there, no matter where you may find yourself right now. You know, and especially those who are tuning in to us via East Radio. I want to say a special good morning and it's nice being out here with you yeah, all yeah. in the studios, Chiki. You look cool and relaxed and happy today. Um, let me congratulate you for your endorsement yesterday on nomination day. And at the same time, congratulating you for adherence of the law and not having big gatherings. Yeah, well, thank, thank you, Chiki. Um, I mean, of course, yesterday being a big day because without yesterday, then you wouldn't be able to, to run contest. contest this election, you know. Yeah. So um, I think it was a very important day, you know. We usually used to... So when they have nomination, they have a big hype day, you know. Yes, true. And yesterday was a, had, to, had to be a different day, you know. But but all in all, I think it was good. I think uh, it was it was nice, you know, that you were able to. And, and you know, they had it at different locations because this, this day out, no? it was spread out. Yeah. I was, mm -hmm. was right at the education office, not too far from our main office. And, then, you know, it was good. Uh, we went out there and things. But... You know, I, I, I think it was a very important day, and I think it, it um, we were able to really get out there, be nominated, went through the process quite quickly, nothing difficult. And, you know, at the end of the day, I just want to thank up all those who went out, the six people who went out and and nominated me, and I would want to thank Mr. Narmo Cruz for coming out and giving me that support, Mr. Jose Ak, Ms. Marcelina, uh, Sutherland, we have Miss Yendi, uh, and also we had Miss uh, Mateo Zul from Champaridge, and of course, um, it was a pleasure having these people out there who came out and gave us that support, you know. And of course, to all those, because we had a lot of UDP supporters with medical who really wanted to come out there in mass, you know. I want to just tell you all, I, I know it's hard because, you know, the politics and, and people want yes. to be out there and, and, and have this feeling and drive and, and things like that. But, you know, I want to thank you all for, for restraining yourself because at the end of the day, we have to ensure that we have safety first and foremost, you know. So uh, these are the challenges that we met. And definitely I want people to know that, that I don't feel like I don't want that neither, you know. You miss it, you? I miss that, yes, of course. I mean, you, you know. Open that. You know, that, that is where you, you have the hype. But, you know, I mean, like, I've, like I said in the interview, it's, a, it's not a normal year. And therefore, politics cannot be, be normal. You know, what we do now, everything must be, must be looked upon uh, keenly and, and, and to ensure that we, we abide by the laws. And likewise, to ensure that we, we, we promote that, that kind of safety measures, uh, you know, in terms of dealing with the COVID. Uh, virus, but um, it is what it is. Uh, any idea? I think um, it went well, and we are officially nominated now. So you know, from here on, it's it's right on to the ball game for the 11th of November, no? Yeah, we must um, congratulate the police department as well. I believe they did a I, tremendous job. Yes, I think so. I think they really did a good job. They were out there. Uh, they ensured everything was. Um, how would I put it? In People never did overcrowd, no? Yeah. You know, that happened in some areas. Yes, of course. Uh, you know, I, I saw the footage last night on the news and, and stuff and, and on Facebook. And definitely you had areas that really had some serious crowd. And, and, you know, of course it raises alarm, you know. Because this, this, this virus is contagious, you know. It is out there. And, you know, certain areas had a good crowd, I noticed, and really, really close. You know, a lot of people tight up and stuff. But... Anyway, it is what it is, you know, and I, I don't know what to say about that. I mean, uh, to each his own, you know. Yeah, but you know, Minister, it goes further than, than only the candidates that are running because two persons were arrested in the city yesterday, and that, that, that is not good for those persons that have been arrested. Yeah. You know, but it's a law. You have to stay within the law and your health. Do you, do you believe that when the, when, when the victory comes, for yourself in the east that people are run out and they start to parade and jump up and well you know i think you, you can't stop that you know you can't stop in terms of people wanting to come out to circle in their vehicles playing music and waving the flag 
you know, all of these things are expected. But, you know, as leaders, I think we have to we have to do our part too, you know. Hello, good morning, Sugar City Morning Show. Yeah, good morning, sir. I'll try and for the album, Mr. Lord, or go on the line supporting that gentleman over there 100%. This album has helped us and develop peace. I've never seen before. No other minister did it before. So to see, I saw it with my own eyes. I even passed by San Ephina and uplifted. I'm so, so happy. I exist on children and even in play. I think this man deserves another chance, and I think I will go support Mr. Loja Ragon 100% my brother. And big up Mr. Loja Ragon 100% all the way UDP. All right. Uh, thank you, Carla. Thank you. Yes, and um, you know, the NAD, I guess that um, after this nomination, they check it. It's only a matter now what, what we are about two and a half weeks, you could put it, yes. to, to election day. And I guess the people will have their say uh, and, and will express themselves on, on that day, you know. So yeah. hey, look forward to that. Yeah. But go ahead, check it. This you know caller mentioned Sandefield. Yeah. Mentioned Sandefield, the development of Sandefield, and you like to say how. How um, how Sandefield look and how it's going up? What, what what's the position? What would I know with Sandefield right now? Well, Sandefield is either say completed. I, I just need for paint the benches. We put about four benches out there. Um, you know, people could sit down. We just need to paint that, and I think we are good to go for the inauguration. Um, and you know, we want to do that as soon as possible. These are the new benches that we put put up there. Uh, so we want to paint those, and after that, we I think we are we are ready to inaugurate the place. You know. Everything is up. Everything is is there. I think the only thing that felt that 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 is needed right now too is to get the um, the connection from so that people could could be able to power the lights. No, the lights already. Every wiring, everything is there, but it's just a matter for for it to be connected. No. So the field has come a long way. Man. Oh yes, man. It looks pretty nice, and and you know we we. Having been able to to look at Sandy Field in a new concept in terms of how we build these bleachers, uh, definitely we'll be looking at the Louisiana government field and all the other fields. And for the future, when we build these uh, structures, we want to build it in a way that it is resilient uh, to the environment. You know, because I think when we first did the the Louisiana government field, we did it out of lumber. And that have to change because you know with the weather and thing, no matter which hardwood you get and thing, all day take one lick and, and you know mm -hmm. but definitely we have learned a lot and definitely we want to renovate all of these areas in terms of transforming it into the kind of uh, one that is more resilient to the weather but uh, these are the things uh, that we are definitely going to work on and we're going to maintain them and as soon as we can we're going to renovate all of these places and definitely the new ones that we build in that we have in plan in terms for for tower hill in terms for Santa Marta and Champagne Ridge, of course they will come around in the same light that we have done Sandy Field, you know. Yeah, I so passed these by are the office things. there, there are a lot of drums there, so the drum project still continues? Oh yes, when the drum project don't stop, you know, I'm, I'm checking. I think we have given out well over, maybe close to 500 drum, drums out That's already. That's a lot. Oh yes, a lot, and we have been giving it out in, in terms of some of the villages like Palmar, you know, I think Champagne Ridge, Tower Hill. Has gotten. I think we're not reached a Carmelita yet, but Carmelita is. A, we will do our best to get out there. But at any idea, I think this drum project goes a long way, checking in terms it's not of. Only for somebody not having a drum, exactly. Right? It, it is about having a, a a proper place to deposit the, the garbage. You know, so you know that because one of the biggest problem we have is where stray dogs go around and they just rip up your, your garbage and stuff. You know, I think these drums provide a. A way and means for for that job that garbage to 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 be right there to be collected by you by the town council right yeah so i think it goes a long way for our environment and especially for letting our our communities look good you know yeah so going back to going back to yesterday um how, how it felt to you yesterday after you were nominated and you came out and then um, i know the feeling is there but it's a historic one because your supporters um, couldn't be there in in mass gatherings to, you know, lift you up and back you and congratulations <laughs> and parade you here the drums and everything. Yes, <laughs> yes. No, it felt very good, you know, um, Cheki, because definitely when you look at the um, the mere fact of how we had to do this, you know, you, you know, I, I know, Cheki, we had a lot of supporters who were prepared to 
come like in a mortal kid and all of these things. But you know, we had to tell him, listen, we we don't want him, him, him do these kinds of things because I want to safety. And you know, we had to talk to them. But you still have people where you know when out there, the people want to go out there and thing, and and you can't stop some sometimes. Uh, the, the large gathering, but at least we're not promote it. We know we're not support in terms of that. Make people understand what we are doing. Uh, I would want to say that um, it's a great feeling being nominated. You know, I mean, I feel very honored. You know, because uh, to be nominated means that that you are putting your name out there on the ballot box, on the ballot paper, so that uh, people can come out on election day and decide if they want to support you or not. I feel very honored to know that, that you know, we have been here in the East for five years now and the tremendous work we have done and to still have the confidence in, in our people from the community who came out and gave me that support because I got people from from my entire, uh, when you look at the East from, I think we had um, um, Yandy Roberts from from um, Tower Hill, we had oh, Sharon, I, I was forgetting Sharon, Sharon Reynolds from Carmelita, we had Mr. Mateo Zul from Champan Ridge, right. we had uh, Mr. Um, Mr. Narmo Cruz from right here in, in Costa Dapple Street, and of course we had Mr. Jose Ak yeah. right on Liberty Avenue, you know, Ms. and, and Miss Marcel who, who is always out there with us. So, you know, for them to being being able to come out with me, you know, and, and, and nominate me, I feel very honored for them to having supported me and I know that these are people who represent my community out there. And so it makes me feel, I, I really feel humbled in terms of, for know that these people are, have your back, you know, you know, and they are ready to come out and they support. Put that confidence in you. Yeah, you know, it, it really f makes me feel very good, you know, it fill, fills me with pride and, and it makes me know, you know what, Aragon, uh, carry on, continue to do the work, the good work that you are doing and, and people will support you. So I felt very good that day, you know, the only thing we're missing, I know a lot of them um, check ESI proceedings right there in terms of where we were with the presiding officer here so where they we are were. Well geared up inside yes well. man. Everything check had to be done properly in terms of uh, the health uh, safety uh, protocols, you know. Okay. There was the social distancing, uh, people had to use sanitizers, etc. Wash your hand before you come in, you know. And we went right through the process, you know, everybody signed up and thing, and then we came out. Like I said, Chekete, to me, the big thing when we're missing out there was that big hype in terms of what we always do. I remember my yes. first nomination there where we walked from Liberty Avenue. Yeah, the group. amount of people that got out out there, the music, the feeling, and we walked together, united uh, to the courthouse last time where I was nominated. Yeah. This year, we, we never had that fun, fanfare, and, and I'll tell you that, you miss it. You miss that because that's a part of politics, that's a part of, you know, uh, the, the hype and all of these things. But then our normal year, like I said, Chiki, and we must adapt to these things and ensure that we, 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 we put our people first. And what I mean that genuinely, we have to be concerned of their health. Yes. You know, I, I mean, because as leaders, we have, to, we have to be more responsible. We have to be the ones for set the pace in terms sure. of how things will be carried out, you know. Mm -hmm. And we can't get reckless and so we cannot get... Um, Understanding that, yes, you are on this side, but you can't put that over the greater good of our community. Sure, you understand yeah. me? Mm -hmm. And and I know because I'll tell you how much people come in my office, so much of a we East committee people, they want, they don't decorate, they chalk, they want, they in, they want, do something, they want, you know. And, it, you know, the, these are the challenges, but at the end of the day, I think it is best for all in terms of safety, in, in, in terms of us dealing with this, this uh, pandemic. Because I'll tell you, the, the, the situation I think that affects a lot in our community is the fact that there are a lot of people out there who say, ah, this pandemic done nothing. This pandemic that, that, that mustn't even chew on that thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, and this and that, that don't affect me. The fact is, check it, a lot of people go through COVID and they must get a cold and must feel really bad. And some people mustn't even know they have it and they get over it. That, and that is fine. But there are people out there who catch COVID and, and are severely affected, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, I know a lot of people out there who have gotten COVID and they tell me, Sarah Gond, this is no joke. I'm thinking I'm mean, dead. It affected me ter tremendously, my lungs, you know. I couldn't breathe properly. So so you hear the stories and you know that that the serious thing. And for those who, some families out there who, who have contracted the, the virus have lost loved ones, you know. True. And, and, and they have lost it because of COVID. And, and so they know really, they, they, they really 
it's a tragedy for them. And and so one of the problems is a lot of people figure, well, ah, this not going happen to me, you know, happened to my van, so I'm okay. But there are a lot of people out there being affected. So we have to be conscious as leaders of that situation. We have to understand what this pandemic uh, that this exists out there. It's a real thing. And only in Belize, this is across the globe right now. There are a lot of countries out there where we just to look for open airport and things like that. But my thing is that, that, that we as leaders have to set the pace for our people. We have to be the conscious ones. We have to be the ones who think on these levels because at the end of the day, uh, we could become irresponsible without even thinking about it. You understand? And, and it is a matter that we must sit back and think on these things. And as far as I'm concerned, Cheke, uh, we have to put our community first, you know, and, and as leaders, we must be conscious of these things. And I think here in the East, we are very conscious of these things. And definitely, you know, we, our nomination went the way it went, you know, without the hype. But the then I did, the most important thing is that our, my name is on the ballot to represent the United Democratic Party and the people of Orange York East. And the most important Second, and the more, or maybe I said the ultimate uh, importance is that uh, we will have our day in, in terms of November uh, 11th, where people will go to the polls and cast their vote. And that, to me, is the ultimate, uh, uh, in, in most important thing that will happen this year in terms of people going to the polls and voting. Yeah. So, you know, and, and that any day the people will decide. But, you know, I, I have the confidence in the people of Orange Joaquis that they will will re-elect me because there's a lot more work that needs to be done. And with me there, without a doubt, we will get those things going. Yeah, we have a little over two weeks for the um, for the election. So how do you um, plan, in this time of COVID, how do you plan to finish up your um, visits and part of campaign leading up to the well, election? Well, Cheki, the, the truth of the matter is that they know, I, they know, they know normally, and it, 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 it brings about a lot of challenges, you know. You have a lot of people out there who have underlying health conditions and really wary of people visiting them, you know. Uh, so we have to identify those people who we need to visit. And also we have to, 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 to see who all we can go to, to also see how we can utilize the technology in terms of the phone calls, you know, uh, the, 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 the WhatsApp and all of these things, yeah. mm -hmm. you know. And so I think that the challenge is there is in, in terms of reaching out and, and 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 meeting people because you know uh, the any idea that the Fui division is not small so there are always challenges and we are spread out but I think with communication and the, the kind of technology it makes it easier to know what it is but definitely it is about us being able to reach out to a lot of people and, and talk to them you know so that is an ongoing challenge but nevertheless we are we are we are up to it no yeah. will it be easier and smoother and more safe um, on election day for persons to try to come out as early as possible to avoid all that rush? Well, I think so. I think what has, what is happening to the, I think the, the chief election officer is looking at certain areas to expand the polling areas. Um, likewise, I think that um, in the East we will see a number of more boxes opening up polling areas so people can go and cast their vote. But I think that is a major concern, um, Cheki. Uh, I know election boundaries will do their part in terms of setting the protocols and how people go and vote and this and that, the social distancing, the wearing a mask, etc. But I do think that the uh, representatives or people who are running also have a responsibility. Uh, we will definitely ensure that we do our best to support uh, the guidelines or the requirements that the Department of Health Services is requesting in terms that uh, the vehicles that we'll be using to ferry people, etc. We have to have hand sanitizers. We have to have proper things. You know, the drivers have to have their masks, and sh you know, shield, uh, and other stuff, so that that we can ensure that the best safety for for people that are being ferried to, to the pools. You know, so that that I think is a responsibility on us, likewise, because we have to contribute towards this the safety of all. You know, and I do think that. At the end of the day, um, people will come, catch a line, vote, and go home. Others who are elderly, others who have underlying health conditions, uh, they will be able to walk right up to the front, go vote, and go home. You know. Yeah. Do you encourage persons to um, take along their voters? Um, yes, of course. Card? If you have the voters card, I think that that is good. It assists the process to go quicker, your social security, and you go and vote. 
definitely the um, uh, there are a lot of people concerned, like you said, but I do think that that um, uh, it will all be managed. And of course, like you said, if you come out earlier, the earlier you come out, the better. You come out, vote, and go home. I do not see large cr swells of crowds will be out there because the regulation does not call for those things, the protocols. So I don't see mass gathering in, on, on, in terms of the political parties. But nevertheless, uh, um, I think the most important thing for, for voters right now is that, that they are accessible quickly uh, as they get on these lines so that they can vote and move on. You know. Yeah. So the lines might look look a little bit longer, but it's the same amount of people that are usually in right. line because of the markers and how they need to right. spread out, right? So, if you see the lines long, it's not for you to get discouraged and say, "Hey, I'll come back later." I want to come back later. The line might look longer because the line will be moving. It's just because of the spread out. Then it looks like there's more people in line, but it's usually the same amount. Right? I always said if a lot of people could look at coming out earlier because sometimes early in the morning you know got crowd. You understand? And then people wait last minute. This is the problem. And when you go last minute, an hour before election, then of course the line gets yes. long. But the earlier you go, I think the quicker you get over it, you know. Hello, good morning, Sugar City Morning Show. Morning, Shaky. Good morning, sir. Morning, Minister. Yeah, good morning. Good morning. I would like to make a contribution about responsible leadership. Um, I have time. Uh, I, I have. I have time to to watch the news. So internationally, I can see where the contrast is clear. You have a responsible government, and you have the responsible government. Let us look at, at an irresponsible government. For example, I was looking at the news for the great United States. You have ventilators for stone dogs. You have hospitalization. You have capacity. You have top doctors. You have coronavirus scientists. And because of irresponsible leadership, 37 states in the United States are spiraling in coronavirus infections. They have 221,000 deaths as a result of irresponsible leadership. On the news, it says that the President of the United States has sent out messages that are contrary to scientific a, a advice where he says the coronavirus is a hoax. Do not let it dominate your life. Do not be afraid of it. He also said that people who wear masks, 85% of them are infected. And that is not true. So by contrast, I'm saying they have so many casualties. Also, on tape, he was heard saying that he knew from in February that Coronavirus was a serious infection, infectious and dangerous. And yet he said, I don't play it. So he's taking a responsibility for saying that he was not straight up and truthful to the American people. As a consequence, again, 37 states are spiraling in infections and he has on his hands, on his hands 21,000 deaths. That's a country that is, that is resourceful in every respect. All right. So that is happening to the responsible leadership. Now, by contrast, we have Belize as a country. In Central America and in this region, we are the lowest in casualties because of the stewardship of the government and the oversight committee. For example, we have two updates, two public briefings, health briefings per, per week. We have the prime minister coming out and say, listen to me. As a people, we have to ad adhere to the advice of the health authorities. Wear a mask, social distancing, etc., sanitization. And today, we are doing well with the coronavirus. We are doing well in the region. We are number one in the region. So there is a contrast between a country that is rich but irresponsible and a poor country like Belize with a government and oversight committee that is responsible. So Belizean people, I want you to understand, be grateful, and be thankful that we have a government and oversight committee that is that is responsible. Hence, we are doing well with coronavirus. One more thing. In closing, I want to say that it is regrettable 
that the leader of the opposition chose to take politics above the welfare of the people. He has yep. conceded personally that he is worried about his political party's success at the polls and to hell with the Belizean people. I don't care about you. And, and, and to prove that, I think it was yesterday when nomination, he was out there bumping shoulder to shoulder with his supporters, again telling the people, I don't care what happened to you. I just want my nomination. I want to look good politically. So that is most regrettable. But I just wanted to show the contrast, no matter how much money you have, if you go on to responsible, you won't get in trouble. In Belize, we are poor, we don't have resources, but we have a responsible government and a responsible oversight committee. And what is regrettable, I repeat, is that the leader of the opposition chose to leave us all and pursue his political gains. So I just want the people to understand that be thankful that we have a responsible government, a responsible prime minister, and um, I think that says enough. Bye. Yeah. Thank you, yeah, thank you Carla, for those. Minister? No, definitely. I think the Carla has made a very, how would I put it to you, a sober uh, uh, analysis, analysis of this situation in yeah. terms of where leadership comes to play, uh, especially right now in terms of us going to an election. I, and, I, and I could confer with him, um, confirm with him in terms of the fact that when you look at the United States, and, and I think he's talking about Donald Trump, <laughs> You know, and how he 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 behaves, etc., and and stuff. Uh, he catch a virus. Though. Yeah, he catch a virus on top. But when you look at at what is playing down here in Belize, because I think that is the most important aspect, is the fact that we have to be responsible, man. You know, we have to put the people first. You know, and I know he mentioned Bojani Briseño, and, and if anybody look at the at the footage, man, he's the leader. You and tell me, he can't talk to people, and he can't ensure that that certain things are abided by. You know, uh, they f listen to me. Any idea that the people who will vote, you know, people on the side on election day. But we have to put safety first. We have to understand the, the situation with the with the pan pandemic. Because listen to me, imagine you got your strong supporter go out there and get sick. Hmm. Or somebody go out there because you have a lot of people who are irresponsible too in terms of they have the virus and they figure they're sick and they still out there. And, and then what? A lot of people get infected and then what? Then get sick. Some of them might maybe be be the, the be um, how would I put it to you? Uh, um, Career. Well, yeah. Or or no. I mean, they get infected and and something seriously yeah. happened to them. So my thing is that we have to be responsible. And on, and I think that when you look at Patrick Faber, I think he came on on Monday on a press conference mm -hmm. and basically laid out why the party he has asked the party uh, and and all our 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 standard bearers. To ensure that we, we don't have that kind of thing, to be responsible. And because you he to sees that, right? it, of course, we have to adhere to that because that is the right thing, Checky. You know? Uh, and then I think the same week you saw Johnny Brissenio come and say, well, they, they cancel the parade, the motorcade, but he, then they don't take that responsibility for ensure that, that they abide by these protocols. And, and you could see it clearly on the videos that are posted all over Facebook and elsewhere. Hello, good morning. Sí, buenos días, Cheque, buenos días, ministro. Buenos yeah, días, ¿cómo buenos está días. la bandera? Es un día, uh, bueno, pues la, pande <laughs> la pandemia <laughs> está <laughs> un poquito fuera de control. Yo creo que tenemos que agarrar más medidas más drásticos para controlarlo, ¿no? ¿Y tus banderas? Pero, este, quiero asegurar a la gente que nuestro gobierno, con el, con el nuestro candidato, el honorable este, Lloyd Aragón, se está haciendo todo lo posible para tratar de mitigar el, 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 la propagación de esta enfermedad, todas las medidas que hemos tomado, incluso la, la, la campaña ha sido bien meticuloso, ¿no? Y este, se está haciendo todo lo posible para, para que no, 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 se, no se expanda esta enfermedad, porque es algo crónico, ¿no? Y especialmente para nuestra gente ya de edad, yo incluyéndome, ya tengo mis 60 años, así que también yo estoy eh, eh, en la lista también. ¿Ah? Yeah. Así que, pues, este, sí, eh, eh, el Partido Unido Democrático es el partido de, 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 de adelanto, de desarrollo, y, y yo creo que eh, andando en la calle con el ministro, 
y, los, y la, no sé de qué está campañando, no hemos dado cuenta que la gente está receptivo. La gente está eh, diciendo, pues, ¿sabe qué? Yo creo que es propicio de darle otro término al UDP. Y yo creo que eso va a ocurrir, porque si, si, si fuera con Santa Marta, se podrían dar cuenta de que la mayoría de las casas, un 70% de las casas tienen bandera. No en los postes, sino en las casas. Así que eso habla bastante del calibre de, de, de campaña que se está llevando y el calibre de candidato que tenemos a esa confianza, porque siempre hemos tenido ese commitment, ¿ah? ese compromiso de nuestro representante. No es una persona que habla, no es una persona que, que se, 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 se hace un fanfare, ¿ah? se hace cuantan, es una persona que siempre está con nuestra gente. Y eso es lo que eh, hace online el tipo de persona que tenemos como ministro, una persona responsable, una persona que piensa en nuestro porvenir. Así que, señores, señores, yo creo que el UDP en este está seguro. Y mira, además de esto, este, Chequi, yo creo que va a haber otras áreas que, eh, según yo, he tenido contacto con bastante gente, porque yo soy una persona que siempre ha viajado en casi todo el país y tengo este, amistades eh, en varios lugares. Por ejemplo, hay gente en Sartenea, Chonush, dicen que allá va a haber una sorpresa. Yo creo que el señor Herrera va a traer esa victoria allá también. También están hablando, yo hablo con gente allá de, de PG. Hay gente que dice que el Dr. Cox lo va a traer también. Así que, señores y señores, yo creo que el UDP va a ser el gobierno otra vez. Así que no hay que tener miedo, hay que pedir a Diosito que nos bendiga, que no haya ningún tipo de percance, problemas, problemáticas, y que salgamos a votar temprano. Hay que darle a, a, los, a la gente de tercera edad el espacio que salgan a votar, porque son, son gente que también han hecho bastante para el país. Y debemos de respetarlo por, por sí mismo. No hay que darle, cuando va en la línea, no lo debemos de molestar si es que es anciano y, y quiere ir a votar. O si está enfermo, hay que darle esa oportunidad. Quiere ejercer, y ejercer su, su derecho también. Así que, señores, señores, honorable, un buen día. Eh, hay que seguir adelante, hay que ir a lo, ¿no? Ok. okay. Thank you, brother. Ok, seguro. Bueno, bye. Yeah. Yeah. Gracias, gracias para pa esas palabras, ¿no? Yeah, um, we have a next call coming in here, Minister. Okay. Um, but, you know, he mentioned about voters coming out early, which is important. And we have to be considerate. I think that is one of the, his, his main important, important points where if you live on the line, man, and somebody come with a serious health uh, um, situation or, or an elderly person, the person will go there. We have to be considerate of that person. And I think... I think I, I, we could count on our community to do that because, you know, people have always been respectful in those areas. We are a responsible community. Exactly, man. And I think it, it will bode well for, for, for all, no? Good morning, Chiki. Hello, good yeah. morning. Morning, uh, Minister. Hello, Adio. Yeah, good, good morning, sir. All right. Yes, right, yes. Um, and I want to know if I hear the book. All right. So, and I listen to know. Uh, so, I, I don't know what I'm calling, but that, you know, uh, I come in with a load of our own, so you bring this on a second time. Um, and uh, I hope you're ready, Mr. Elodio. Let me uh, Kevin walk you out one by one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, when, so, so I don't know. I, I, you know, definitely I want to let people know, check it, the support that we have out there. Is tremendous for the re-election of my, my, my candidacy. And I could tell you that because wherever we are going, people are supporting us. So we're not to put post on flag, pan, pan, um, flag on post. We are putting flags in people's homes. And tell you the truth, I think that the tremendous work that we have done, Chikim, a lot of people can see the work that we have done, the commitment that we have for our area. And to me, every time I go there, I meet people, and people look at me and say, Aragon, man, good job, I really... We really appreciate what you do, etc. Check it, those things go a long way for me. I feel very good about these things. And that is why we have the confidence in this that, you know, we will win. We have, we'll be, I will be re-elected to office because of the continued commitment that we have had for our people. And that commitment are not just uh, right now. It is a commitment that we have had throughout 
uh, are the term that we have been here. And like I've always told people, you know, the work speaks for itself. You know, of course, the PUP want to come. They are the amount of, uh, in what you call them, in the online or Facebook, the amount of fake profiles they have. It look like that are all the town council they do right now. You know, the mayor has a lot of people on as fake profilers and things like that. They have a lot of people out there that are being paid, and you can look on their comments. A lot of them are, are really, how would I put it? Um, they get to the extent where they are, uh, what are the words when you, when, like they despise, like they, they're just there as sour grapes, you know? And, and all of these things, when you look at, you know, shows the desperation of the PUP. And what is happening, Cheke, I will tell you, day by day right now, the PUP is losing major ground, you know, on everything that they have done. Because at the end of the day, make we be real, the people of this country, know exactly who they are. They can't hide, they can't come behind my curtain and come out and say this and they knew me. You are who you are. Everybody know who Johnny Brissanio is. Everybody know in this town who the mayor is. You understand me? And what they bring. You understand? They can't hide. When you look at all the other major candidates that are running for the People's United Party, we know who they are. They were part and parcel of the worst corrupt era in this, in the history of this country. Huh? People know that. And that is why they will not win this election, Cheki. And I've always said it, and I've always tried to shoot straight. In terms of when you look at the PUP, Cheki, the PUP have not won another election. You know why? Because of the same bunch of leaders that they have. Huh? And Gianni Brisenio is desperate. They are very desperate, the PUP. They will make fake, fake news. They will do all kind of things. I uh, put posts out there, make assumptions out there. Just like when they put me in terms of when I was at the airport. Right now, I could tell you right now, Channel 5 and, and the PUP has been sued. My attorney have already written to them. And these are the things we have to sue and we have to counter. But what does that show you? It shows you the desperation of the PUP right now. And in Orange Walk, the PUP are desperate right now. You know why? Because Johnny have a lot of things right now. He, he even to show sure about himself right now. My man is very busy now. Why? Because of the work that Danny has been doing. You know? And they are desperate right now because they are losing ground every day right now leading up to election. And I could tell you that because that is not only here in Orange Rock, it is countrywide. Oh. Hello, good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Yes. I, I, I am interested in my country. I'm interested in the people of Belize. And I would want to see that good things happen here in Belize. For this election, it has to be UDP, and I will explain to you why. We have already heard that Johnny Bissenio, leader of the opposition, cried out to the PUP leaders, bring back the millions you stole from the Belizean people, bring it back to the PUP party. You should all go to jail. These are the words of the leader of the opposition, Johnny Bissenio, telling his people that they have stolen the money from the Belizean people and that they should bring it, not to the Belizean people, but to the PUP party. No, he wants the people to elect these same thieves as leaders of the people and nation of Belize. Man, this is a craziness, man. He has condemned them. He has said that they are the thieves. I know he is telling the people, no man, no vote today. My PUP Belizeans, I have to address the PUP Belizeans. How can you ever think of voting for Johnny and his pack of thieves to get back into power to do the same thing, to steal the money of the Belizean people and the country? They are the same tired an old bunch of thieves who should have gone to jail. At this point, they should be put to pass and to hold. Most of them are over 60. They have been in government before, but done nothing for their people. You look at Central, ask, ask anybody, what has Johnny Bissanya done for people in the Central? He is, a, he is about 60 years. He has been in politics for about 30 years. Question is when he was in government, did he do anything for Central? 
He did, I wouldn't say he didn't, he didn't do anything. He did a few things. But for so long in, in government and out of government, he has done very little for Central. Let me tell you what all he does when election to as mayor. It is to call the people and offer them money. After that, he forgets the people until the other election. When the election draws near, he begins to call them at his house, wherever. Voters in Central, I need to address you. Voters in Central, this time around, man, take your money, man, and vote him out. Take his money and vote him out. That is the way you are to think. He's paying you money. He feels he can take you as fools, that you will take his money and vote for him. Well, if he believes that, you take the money. But don't vote for him. He thinks you're all going to sell out for dollars. Well, as I said, it's time. Show him this time that his time is long gone. The money and vote him out. The leader of the opposition is the biggest hypocrite of the thiefing PUP leaders. You can ask him about the custom house and the properties sold for millions to his family who then turn around and sell it for millions. Man, you buy one house for ten dollars, you did buy a house and lot for ten dollars, and then you turn around and sell it for millions of dollars. Man, that's disgraceful, that's cheating, that's stealing. You can ask him about the television companies he got on the shady deals. That is why today, if you look at him, he probably is the richest man in Arendwak. He is the richest man in Arendwak. And probably he is the richest man in all believes. You check all the things he has, the thousands of acres of land, the orange juice factory that he has bought over, the company, gas station, man, you name it, he has it all. Man, how can we consider to vote for PUP when they are the ones who have wrecked this country? They are the ones who have put us under the super bond, which we are still paying. Belizean people, especially you, the PUPs, that time will not think and do the right thing. This government has to continue because Johnny and his crowd are not good for this country. They will destroy this country. Thank you. Yeah. Well, definitely, man. I think okay. definitely what the caller has said is important. Listen to me. I think the Belizean people, the Belizean people are smart and intelligent people. You know, I feel this election again, they will make the right decision, and the only decision uh, that is the right decision is that for the UDP. You know, Johnny Brisenio and the PUP are desperate right now, Cheki. They are desperate and the grabman to stress, they will do anything. They are selling their soul to the devil for trying to win this election. But at the end of the day, this election is up to the Belizean people across this country. And we must make the right decision because our future matters, Sheki. And I will tell you this right now, right now we need good stewardship. We need uh, people that can make the right decisions for this country. Huh? Right now, if you get the PUP back in office, you know what will happen? There's no coming back, Cheki. Not in the economic state that we are right now. You put the PUP in there, there's no comeback. Nobody could bring us back. Because these people are the very same people who brought the Super Bowl on us, who brought this country to its knees. You are telling me there's any change to come with them? None. Can't be, Cheki. They're like, dog, we eat egg. Then you can't change that. They will always do that. That is their modus operandi. That is what, who they are. That is what they have made up. Uh, and that is why the Belizean people have done the right decision for the last three elections. And they will continue to do it this election. Why? Because the PUP has not brought about a viable option. The PUP has had the same old leaders that the people don't want to see. But you know what? They're greedy. They want to be there. Johnny Brissani does not want to relinquish power. Man, he could have made done Ghana and, and he could have made do great works for the community, you know, because you don't, not, you don't need to be into politics to do and contribute to your community. What has he contributed to this community? Nothing, Cheki, for being the kind of millionaire he is in this community of ours. What has he done personally from his companies to this community of ours? Next to none. Huh? And they make millions of dollars from smart go down to center to 
to the cable company, to the juice company where he owns, to the gas stations that he owns across this country, to, to, um, to, the, to the radio stations, you name everything that he has his hands on in this country, in this town of ours especially. As what has he given back to the community? Nothing. Huh? They might not have no love for this country and especially for the people in Orange Rockies. They have been able to manipulate this community of ours and they will continue to do so if the people allow them to do so. Man. And that is why you have election every five years so that the people can put and has the opportunity to put the right people uh, in, in, in office and support the right candidates. And that is why we are going to an election. And this is the reason why people must make the right decision. And definitely the PUP is not an option right now. And they are desperate as hell. Check it. All right, Minister, we'll be taking a break. It's 15 minutes after 8 o'clock, folks. We ask you all to hold off your calls. We want to say good morning to the folks listening to the East Radio this morning. Good morning to, good, to the good people of Orange Walk East. And everyone viewing us right here on North Television Channel 10, Minister Aragon and Robert Cheke Asher will be back after these messages right here on North Television Channel 10. When you think about compassion, care and kindness, the Air Representative of Orange Rock East, Honorable Elodie Aragon Jr., immediately comes to mind. He has demonstrated true dedication and hard work that the people he represents are his priority. His work in Orange Rock East to deliver goods and services has been never ending. Infrastructure, streets, water, land, social assistance, sports and education are areas in which Mr. Aragon has focused and delivered to his people in Orange Rock East. Honorable Aragon has lived a life of dedicated service to his country and people with an excellent track record. Orange Rock East deserves the best. So, for continued development, vote for Honorable Elodie Aragon Jr. Belize saw unprecedented development and transformation under the UDP over the last 12 years. Belize's development has encountered challenges outside of her control this year, but the United Democratic Party stands competent, prepared, and electrified to lead our country through recovery and into prosperity. Join us on Thursday, October 15 at 7.30 p.m. as we launch our 2020-25 manifesto, Because Your Future Matters. Catch us on Love TV, Wave Radio and Wave TV, Channel 7, Norte Vision, Maximum Cable, and on the UDP Belize Facebook page. The development comes through vision, dedication, and hard work. These qualities possessed by Honorable Elodie Aragon are in full display as he embarked in a project to open new streets in Carmelita Village. This will allow access to new landowners to their own little piece of the jewel. Honorable Elodie Aragon Jr. and the government of Belize, leadership that works. We have made unprecedented investments in developing the backbone infrastructure of our nation which has positively impacted every community in this country with new roads, sporting complexes, water and waste management systems, hospitals, schools, electricity, and internet connectivity. These investments have contributed greatly to the movement of people, goods, and services, and has bolstered our economic growth while setting the stage for a new era of Belizean prosperity in the upcoming decade. Since 2014, Honorable Elodio Aragon has been quietly and consistently assisting deserving residents of Orange Walk East through a pantry program that he put together using personal resources and also with the support of generous business persons. It started with the distribution of 100 packages per month and has now doubled to 200 packages per month. Packages comprised of rice, beans, flour, and sugar, which are staples in any household, and a great help to the recipients. 
during the state of emergency in the month of April, Honorable Racon also prepared and delivered 3,000 food hampers to residents of Orangewalk East. In the first instance, 1,500 parcels were delivered, followed by 1,500 more two weeks later. This was done because Mr. Aragon was aware of the hardships some of their residents were going through due to the COVID curfew. This is a man who cares. Honorable Elodio Aragon Jr. with you always. Let's take a look at the PUP DNA. Julius S. Pat, representative for Cayo South, was sold the Chief Justice residence by a PUP government for a mere pittance and turned around and flipped it for over a million dollars. Cousin Luke S. Pat got a sweetheart pass from the then PUP government when they sold him the country's most valuable asset in the Port of Belize and he allowed Ashcroft to take it over. Now, Cousin Mike Espat, representative for Toledo East, brought the VOA compound in PG with a DFC loan, which was later written off. He sold it for millions. Corruption is in the PUP DNA. This is the same old PUP. On election day, let's make the right choice. Re-elect. Elodio Aragon Jr. With you always, leadership that works, representing Orange Rock East, because our future matters. Not even a question, who may vote in me? You already know we voting for the UDP, because they are the best one in the driver's seat. So go put your ex right there, so we're the son of the East. Yeah, we talking about who? Aragon, 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 we talking about who? Aragon, Aragon, the number one we talking about who? Aragon, Aragon, one and only son now there of the East. Yeah, we voting for Aragon, he go and repeat. Voting Aragon, he's the number one. Yeah, voting Aragon, he get the job done. Yeah, and so. Welcome back, welcome back to the Sugar City Morning Show right here on North Television Channel 10. 21 minutes now, 21 minutes after 8 o'clock. Minister, we've been talking about the nomination day yesterday. We've been talking about some guidance to um, election day. Um, what's your take on the, um, the voting of the persons that are infected with the COVID? Well, you know, I, yesterday I think Love FM had asked me that question, and, and you know, the truth of the matter is that um, I think um, the way it is going, uh, people who have uh, positive COVID will not be able to vote. And I think that, that, that I have to sympathize with them because, you know, they're your constitutional right to go and vote, but if you're sick and you have a, a very contagious uh, a virus, then how will you go? We have to protect the greater good of people, you know. That's a hard call. Yeah, yeah, it is. Hello, good morning. Sugar City Morning Show. Yeah, good morning. Good morning, Chucky. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Minister Aragon. Yeah, good morning, sir. I want to join, I want to join with thanking you and all the candidates of our party, all the standard bearers of the United Democratic Party, who are the <laughs> of the leadership of our party, in terms of not having motorcades yesterday for nomination day. Because we made the decision as a party that the safety of the people of Belize comes first. That's right. So I want to thank you, sir, for adhering to that protocol um, decided by the leadership of our party. I'm calling this morning, guys. Nomination day is over. Nomination day is over. But the confusion and the disorganization within the opposition is clearly evident you know we were watching this thing all along and we knew that the candidate for the Kaya West constituency is not a registered voter anywhere in this country what? and we, we watched it yesterday and we thought that the opposition would have changed this gentleman but they proceed with nominating this man you know a person who is not registered anywhere in this country to seek to want to get the vote of the people of the Kaya West constituency. This is a total disrespect to all 182,000 voters, you know, who went, who took time out to go to registration offices across
across this country to ensure that they are qualified to vote on election day. And here you have this man who is seeking to represent the people of the Kaya West constituency. So, not Kala, you are saying that um, he's not registered in the area or you're not registered none at all? He is not registered anywhere in this country. He is not among the one, over 182,000 people that are on the list. What? This is a disrespect to every single voter in this country, man. Um, no, we know. We know, and, 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 and it's a no secret that the man is going to lose out there in the Kaya West constituency. But, lad, man... Your secretariat should have done its due diligence, man. This man knew six months before that he was he was accepted. He was endorsed as a candidate for that constituency six months before the close of the registration period. And you mean nobody in the opposition told this man to at least go and register, man? Huh? man. The leader of the opposition should immediately remove this man because he's a disrespect to every voter in this country. And of course, when you remove him, you will automatically declare the current candidate for that constituency as the returned person, as the duly elected standard bearer, because it will happen on the 11th of, on the 11th of November. But I am saying, I am saying, confusion within the party. You are not doing your due diligence at that simple political duty. How can you govern a nation? Uh, when the responsibilities are much bigger. Uh, this is a shame. This is a disgrace on every person for running the opposition, including the party leader. The man can't even vote for himself. Well. <laughs> he can't vote for nobody. Uh, he can't vote for nobody, sir. Uh, what is the area of Kaya Westcala? This is the Benke area. This is, Benke, this is the Honorable Irwin Conservatives area. The man's name, the man's name is Jorge Emilio Espat. He was born on the 25th of July, 1973. We check on my mother's name, my father's name, his date of birth one day before his date, the day after, and he's registered nowhere in this country. Huh? That is a level of disrespect, the level of disorganization among the opposition, and these are the persons who want to run this country. We are waiting to see what the leadership of that party has to say, what the work can be saying. They are calling on this station because he listens to this station in a ritual song. Mr. Leader of the Opposition, Mr. Bresenio, how can you so disrespect every voter of this country to be offering a candidate for your party, sir, who did not even take the time out to go and register, register. despite <laughs> the fact that he knew that you, all of you knew that he was running for the constituency because you went over here and banked it. Man, you couldn't have asked the man at this if he registered. Huh? You went to Benke to endorse this gentleman, to push him down the throat of the people of Benke. He does not even reside there, but that is beside the point. He resides in Belize City. That is beside the point. The man is not registered, not even for vote for a PUP candidate in Belize City. Wow. Huh? This is a disgrace and a shame. This nation is waiting to see now what the leader of the opposition is going to do, but the right thing for him to do is to ask this gentleman to leave and to ask his department to disqualify him. Huh? You have brought shame on every person within the People's United Party leadership, and including the leader. The leader must now apologize to every voter, because in other words, what they're saying, we never have to gang and register. We can put somebody, when they gang and register for run for run, such shame and a disgrace. The people of the the people of the Kaya West constituency, however, will continue to vote for the United Democratic Party and for Erwin Contreras. We know that. We know that. What I am saying, man, at least have some respect for the voters of this country, no, sir? Huh? And Minister Aragon, whenever the new government takes place, sir, one of the first order for the new government is to amend Section 57 of the Constitution. Section 57 and 58 to ensure, sir, that a qualification for any person who is seeking nomination to run in a general election must be a registered voter in the country, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Carla. I think that um, you couldn't have said it any better, you know, but this is a situation where the PUP, they don't, they don't have no love for nobody, you know. 
And putting up candidates like that, well, I guess that speaks for itself too, right, Cheke? Yeah, because um, you should be a registered voter, voter man. man. If you're if you are, in your country, right? And you, exactly. If you want to be a leader of this country, man, you, you're supposed to at least be able to register yourself. You, you know, think so? Yes, I'm sure that you want to. You want then you, to you are be before. part of this process, you know? Well, yeah. and in the way down west, yeah, you know, yeah. we got our own situation up here, you know? And I tell you, the PUP here, Johnny Bresenio, they are desperate right now. You know, but definitely I think the Belizean people will see right through them. And I don't see how Gianni Bresenio, uh, in terms of his party, will make it this general election. And I say that based on many, many things, Sheke. And I tell you, people just have to take a sober look of who the PUP are, and they will see that they are not an option, you know. And it's not uh, like I've always told people, you know, maybe a long time ago if they would have removed all of them, make Gianni should have took all of them to Pasha and let the PUP come up with new blood. But they don't do that. They stay with all the old folks, eh? all the corrupt people. Uh, and to me, that is their greatest downfall of that party right now. Hello, good morning, Sugar City Morning Show. Yes, good morning, Cheki. How are you, my brother? I'm good, but I'm good. How are you doing? Yeah, not bad, uh, Minister Aragon. Yes, good morning, sir. Good morning, morning, sir. Carmelita in the house. Yeah, you did. Yeah, man. Yeah, I just want to give up to me some MC work here in Carmelita. And what we are showing that the people of the area is continue to meet him and we will vote to make sure that he is back there again in the new government. But I want to say to the voters in the East, you think that you got to get out there on election day and vote. Do not stay home. There might be some of you that are a little bit disgruntled. Maybe you didn't get exactly what you thought you would have gotten. But look at the work that has been done. And go out there. Don't stay home. Take your friends. Take your family. The brothers or sisters, because this, is like, this election is very important for the country of Belize. Don't go out there and vote for personality. Go out there and vote for your country. Vote to save Belize. Go out there and vote for the UDP. Thank Minister, for all that you have done for us. I hope that you have, we have you again to continue the great work you have done. Thank you guys yeah. for the time and continue to cheer for you. Yeah, man. Yeah. Th thank, thank you, Carla. Thanks, thanks for those words, you know. Well, next call it for me, Minister. Hello, good morning. Morning, morning. Morning. Yes, good morning. Um, only want to ask a question, no? Go ahead, sir. Um, you see the route from Santa Marta to New Orleans. The men on the one do a little upgrade from the road because that road, that road is bad, bad, bad right now. Right. And the, 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 the elite forestry department where really it's fresh water quick, they don't want to make them scrape it. So I don't know what where, where, where could happen with that or who contact for the elite for them, no? Yeah. All right, Carla, we, we are aware of it. I think the request has been made, and what we are trying to do is get the... Um... Because because the one time from Little Belize to Newland, the men on the already upgraded that, that okay. part to the next... Reserve where they right. can by Balam Jungle. Right. That's perfect right though. The Mennonites, they work on us, but the one from Newland to Santa Marta, that's terrible right now. And they right. reserve where they did, they don't want to make them upgrade that road there. No, well, I think I think they have, they can't, they, they, you see, there's a distinct, uh, what I say, management of the place. You have the, those from Fire tend to the natural reserve that is there, and then you have the public works that is responsible for roads. What is happening, uh -huh. I, I remember when we fixed last time, because I think the Mennonites assisted in this endeavor, we had to get yes. them on board. And so what is what we are trying to do right now, and I'm working on it right now, and I'm hopefully maybe today it gets resolved, uh, where we're trying to make uh, forestry along with public works uh, basically um, start this thing out, because the NID is not going to cost uh, taxpayers any money. It is about the Mennonites putting in the work because the road is, is, is terrible and needs uh -huh. needs yes, to be it's serviced. Very bad right now. Yeah. And, and it's important for people there. Yeah. Santa Marta people and right. lots of people when they work um, 
Yes, of course, we know that. So we are working on it. I've already been informed about it, and we are working on tying that down. Right, no? Man. Congratulations to Minister. Yeah. No, no problem, my brother. We're there right now. We are working on these things, all right? All right. Yeah, Minister, talking about roads, you, you did you have um, time to reach? Um, let's get this one. Hello, good morning. Good morning, thank you. Good morning, Minister Aragon. Good morning. I listened, I listened to our previous caller saying that um, the Nimbesenio did nothing for Central. To our no he did something, yes. He gave everybody some of and carried them a quote in and this hard time for TV station. Now take people being legal money for you to them and pay him. Right. Just think about that. Bye. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, yeah. Carla. And, and this is the kind of thing, Chucky, you see? I mean, as a leader, man, you have to look out for people, you know? And and Johnny Brissenia, I know somebody where could say he in struggle, he not got this. He got the resources. He has it there, but he has never done nothing for people. When people were in lockdown, man, how good he may have looked at the company, come out and say, you know what? For the next two months, I will forego one league cable. Man, after people have supported him, time and time again. I mean, but they have never showed from their personal side in terms of what they, the love they have for our communities. They have never. And I always talk and, and mention that they are the octopus in this country, in, in our, our community, because they hands, have their hands all over the place. Uh, and, and these are the things that, that, that Belizean people must wake up, especially Orange or Kenyans, and smell the coffee and understand what is happening in our community, you know? Uh, and that is why every year the Constitution gives people the ability, the opportunity, the sacred constitutional right to come out and vote. So you make these wise decisions. And these are the kind of things that we have to understand. Huh? And time and time again, I am telling you, Jerry Brissenio is not fit to lead this country in no way and shape or form. Hello, good morning, Sugar City Morning Show. Yes, good morning, Robert. Check your channel. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, yeah, morning. Morning, Minister. Yeah, morning, 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 him. Morning, Minister. I first offer my, offer my congratulations to you to be the political officer, uh, uh, candidate for the United Democratic Party. And uh, Victoria will be a vic victorious come uh, the 11th of uh, November, Minister. There's no doubt about that, right? <clears throat> but I, I am still, I am still starting to see how the leader of the opposition operated on yesterday to respect the social distance of this country. That guy have no, no respect for law and order. How can a man who have no respect for law and order can lead our country? What kind of country will we have with Jan Bacena become prime minister? My Belizean brothers and sisters, let's look at the type of leadership of Jan Bacena is and see the difference. It's very, very, very clear that the Honorable Patrick Fawa is a better leader. A proven leader, a leader that will take you to higher heights. Good morning and thank you very much, sir. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Yeah, Minister, um, did you manage to reach um, the um, roads in Palmar? In Palmar, yeah, we are fixed. We have been fixing some roads in Palmar, and I want people to know that um, there's a lot of roads right now, and I'm trying to get. And I know there's a great call for people from Carmelita, and I want them to know that we'll definitely get out there. I think that will happen. Right here, this coming week, we'll be out there dumping the, the road to the new development area. And we will be putting down, down those roads because those roads are important to people right now. You know, I've been out there, I've seen the condition. You know, everything takes time, everything has its process, but we will get out there and we will take care of that, no? So, so the road works continue in Palmar? road works continue. Well, in Palmar right now, I think, uh, I, I am not sure, I have to check where they are with, with these road works. But we need to go to Carmelita because a lot of people are depending on these the, the, the road to the development area, the new area. So mm -hmm. we are working, we are going to work, I want to work on that to do as much roads as I can to, to, to basically that is the, the, the village expansion we are talking yeah, about. People need access, right? Of course, that's that's he the main yeah. issue. Hello, good morning. Morning, Chucky. Morning, Mr. Rabun. Yeah, morning, good morning, Mr. sir. Good morning. What's up, Mr. Rabun? I feel in the past for a commercial study about you, sir. I, I think it was over good enough. I think you shouldn't have answered that, that, that guy in the interview you know, when you went to the uh, port. I think what you should have done, they should have brought Karim Musa and the other counselor who went to mainland China. And what did they go and do? You did not go to mainland China. What, say, what Karim Musa and the other um, Councillor from Belize went to do in mainland China up to now, they don't get out and tell Belize they are nothing. But if Karim stand up and they roll, they roll up, boy, they run, they run, they run. 
<laughs> All right, thank you, Carla. Like I said, you know, the PUP are desperate right now. Check, check yes. him. They are very desperate and they will do anything because they know the, the beating that we have put on the mayor. And I will tell you all what they can, they, they can bring anything they want and that can't. I, I fear none of that because I know exactly where I stand. Check him. And anybody will know me out there, both personal and otherwise, know that I'm a person of integrity. You understand? And, and that is why right now I had to, I had to get the attorneys for Sue Channel uh, 5 and Sue the PUP. And that is already in process. And I will, uh, you know, uh, highlight in terms of the letters that we have sent out and all of that so people can see. Hello, yeah. good morning. Hey, sorry. Uh, call again. No, sorry. Uh, call again. Forget the minister. Good news. Um, minister, the, the, work, the work for Kabilita begins tomorrow. It's scheduled for tomorrow morning. All right. Okay. All right. So, okay, Minister. Yeah, thank you. That is good news to you. Yeah, good news, good news. news for the people of Carmelita, right? Of course, of course. Well, once it's <laughs> for development, my brother, I feel good about it because it is what we are working on. And, and a lot of people don't know the struggles we go through because a lot of people figure everything we are going to do, oh, the government, um, a lot of it is not government because, uh, Cheki, one of the greatest challenges we have, I have had as a, as a young politician is that I'm just a minister of state. And people don't understand the difference between being a full-fledged minister and a minister of state. Yeah. You know, and for the last five years, the kind of battles I've taken on have really, uh, how would I put it to you, has been a challenge for me these five years. But, you know, that has never stopped the effort and drive uh, for me to, to be able to lobby, to be able to bring development and, and, and improve our community here in Orange Rockies. You know, that has never never faded away from me and that is my true commitment because we want to see the kind of development right now where the where, where the call where mr i think i'm mr pet Mikhail, in terms of the good news about tomorrow is because arrangements have been made where i have people with private trucks and private excavator being able to come together and this is the kind of strength that i bring you know in terms of getting things together to be able to pull these materials for these roads because we have to get it done you know uh, you can't depend on government every time Public works equipment breaks down here. They have emergency there, and th these are the challenges you face on a day-to-day -day basis. But it is a, the, the, the the desire to to be able to do something for when people need it. I mean, to me that to me that is where leadership comes into play, and that is what I bring to the Orange Rockies. And not only in terms of the the kind of uh, uh, um, coordination and being able to harness the cooperation of others in our community, but also check it. People know me. They know that with me they have integrity. You know, yeah, I'm going to name it at this and that. You know, they only have, you only have these these things that come up where people try to tarnish and defame my character. But that will not triumph. Uh, that any day, people who know me know who I am and what I stand for. And I've always stood for our people in this community. And I've said it again, I could care less what others do. I worry about what I do and how that will impact my community. You know? um, how about um, the, um, the police station in Carmelita? Yes, that's, that's, we're working on the police station. And, and you know the story behind this police station, Cheki, is that last year we had budgeted $450,000 uh, for us to be able to do a ferro-concrete structure. I already had the designs, everything, and we had a delay, and that delay cost us this building. And the delay was that we had done soil testing, everything behind the community land in Carmelita. Right beside the community center, there's a piece of land. And that is where we were going to put the police station. Nobody would have ever dreamt of or would have expected that that land was in private hands. And it is in private hands under the name of a Ramona Cad, right? And everybody could make their assumptions on that. But the fact is that that land is in private hands. And so we had to know find another piece of land in that village because, you know, just before the building looked for start, we found out that that was in private hands. And nobody better go and check, you know, until the ministry do their due diligence like they always do for yes, projects. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because we, who would have ever believed in our Carmelita that the land right behind the community center, which the community has been keeping or uh, upkeeping for years, is private land. Check it. But that is the kind of corruption the PUP brings, you know. And, and 
So we had to find another year, one, one other place. By the time we found another place, by the time we did all the checks, by the time we, we did the soil tests and all of these things, and you know, with government, things move slow at times. Yeah. So if by that time, uh, and we get to go ahead for the building to be placed there, this, that pushed us right early this year. And when it pushed us there, we had COVID. And what did government do? Government pull all these finances. So if and the so land never gone, Carmelita, <coughs> don't get May I don't get the ferro concrete building, a nice, nice building. You know, but so that was a major setback for us there in, in the village. And I, I said a major setback for the people of Carmelita because they really need this, this station out there because this station is not only about Carmelita. It is about the serving and quick response for the other villages yes, in, yes. in our communities, you know, and to support the police and a whole because they're very close to the highway. So that whole situation uh, really affected us in being able to get our fire concrete building because, you know, COVID time, government pull all those government projects uh, whenever I start it and then take their money from the budget. Uh, so that is the situation. But nevertheless, we have, have been able to get to put down a building on the on the ground right now, which will be f retrofitted for the use of the police for a police station right now, so that we can begin to get the service. We now might operate from a ferro concrete building, but the, this is so the that building, building is there already. Yes, that's already there, okay. and that will be uh, basically retrofitted uh, for the use of the police to be able to um, have the presence of the uh, police. presence. And I think that is the start. That's the start, and down the road. Uh, this will eventually turn into a dorm room or a barrack room for the police officer as we are able to build our ferro concrete building now. Hello, good morning. Morning, Mr. Chucky. Good morning. Um, how about Campanile Road? Will that be paved? No, that not be paved right now. That will have to be paved on the next term. Okay, thank you. Yeah, sure. When it happened, you know, I, I know that the, the, the main thing people asking in Champion Ridge is the road for Champion Ridge. Uh, but that comes f with financial yeah. uh, funding. At this point in time, government doesn't have that kind of money to, to pave roads right now. You know, you know, you know the situation with government mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and this pandemic. But it is a road that is very important and needs to be paved. And I think as soon as funding comes about, those are the things that I'm loving for. In the Orange Rock East, I will tell you, there's only basically uh, that concerns us is, is basically three roads that is left to pave. Once these two, three roads are paved, that's it for Orange Walk East, you know. Uh, and to a large extent, Orange Walk Town, we can Orange Walk Town. Once and get the Sunny Seven Progressive Road finished, that's it. We all could say all the major roads in Orange Walk is paved. Uh, and that those roads are Santa Marta Road, the road to, to, um, to, to, to Champagne Ridge, and of course, the road to Guinea Grass, passing through Tower Hill. The one from Orange Walk to Sunny Seven. Yeah, and so that one there. Once you get them four roads, that's it for Orange Rock Town. You know, you could say that every road, major road, is paved, and and, and these things are very achievable. I, I'll tell you, check it. Very achievable because, throughout the term, uh, you have um, funding that comes for these kinds of things to OPEC, uh, through the Kuwaiti fund and other things where uh, government decides where these fundings will go. Uh, definitely, I am sure because we nearly get the Santa Marta road paved. A lot of people don't know it. We came very close for, for it to be paved, but any, ended up that that money was diverted uh, to another major area that needed the road. If not, we might get that road paved. So it's not that we are not looking at it. It is all about uh, 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 being at the right time in terms of funding uh, to come that, that will be allocated for these things. But I have the confidence, man, that that when you look at this last five years term, we get the San Esteban Road uh, uh, up came into effect right within mm -hmm. this this uh, maybe five years ago how, I, I'm not sure how long it took and we are seeing the the, the, the road to certain air being paved and all of these things so check it that just a matter of time when we get all these roads paved here starting with Champagne Ridge going right down to Santa Marta and Guinea Grass so that's just a matter of time but that, like I said everything is dependent on the government finances in terms of how we are doing uh, economically and I think that at the end of the day it is this UDP government that has been always working on the development, the kind of infrastructural development, the kind of road works that is required, etc. So the people could have confidence that it, if anybody will get these things paved, it is the government. You understand? And, and, and people must understand that everything cannot be done in one term. It takes time. But I will tell you, Cheke, in the five years that we have been here, that I have been here in the Orange Rockies Division, man, 
the amount of development that I have brought to the Eastman is second to none checking. You, when you look at the factory, the brewery factory, that is there checking. Right now, they got about 65 to 75 people working right now, you know. And, and this COVID has affected everything. It's affected the, 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 in terms of the engineers couldn't come in because the airport was closed, so it held, us, held those people back for quite some time. But nevertheless, the factory is, is already up. That's a matter for me, then kick off. So and that will happen very soon. Yes, and get operational very soon. Mm -hmm. And that will see an additional, maybe close to 200 jobs more checking. Easy. You know what that means? 200 families will be able to have um, um, a, war, a job and be duly employed. Man, which representative ever bring that? You have Johnny Brissenio here, and the only industries he brings is for his own self. You, you, you understand? We, I have brought within five years a factory to this, this, this tongue of ours. Uh, when you look at, at, at land expansion that we have done um, and, and being able to assist many people with, uh, with lots, I mean, that, that continues to show the work we have done. You know, the police station that we would have had uh, already if it, it hadn't been for the corruption of the PUP. Uh, imagine, and, and apart from that, you have the new high school that will be placed there in, in, in the first ever in the East. You know, you look at major infrastructure such as what is happening at Louisiana Government School. Uh, you look at all the other work, the, the, the other building that will be put close to a million dollars in Santa Marta for their first state-of-the-art preschool. Uh, you look at all the other works, and I could sit down here and talk to you all night about major works that we have done and other works that we have done. Check it. Nobody can say that we have not done the kind of work that the East uh, uh, deserves. And that is in five years, check it. Imagine what else we will do because of the commitment that we have. And I could tell you, uh, when you hear the caller ask about Champagne Ridge, I know the people want Champagne Ridge Road, and we will get it. But it's just a matter of time, uh, and we have to lobby for these things and fight for these things. And there's no better person right now to lobby our, our government, to lobby uh, for, for these things. Because one way or the other, I have stood there for the people of this, this uh, uh, country. I've stood there for the people of my division. And I will continue to do so, Cheki, because at the end of the day, I want to see the best for the community where I live, where I reside, and, 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 and where the people I know live, you understand? And, and that is important to me. But a lot of work left to be done, Cheki, and that is why right now we need a new mandate so we can carry on with the good work. And the only confidence you can have as a Belizean right now going to the polls is to know that it is the UDP government who have always moved this country forward. You know? what's, what's, what's the fears of the um, Louisiana government school right now? Man. And Cheki, I don't know if them why bring pictures this morning, but maybe they could show the Louisiana government school. I will tell you, Cheki, it's well underway. Beautiful building, man. And it shows you the, the kind of investment that, that I've been able to, to lobby like for and bring along with the government uh, uh, people. Huh? That look like yes, a government building. it's not a joke. Uh, and I want to big up the, 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 the principal of the school, the PTA staff, and all those people who have supported this project, Cheki. This is a magnificent project, you know, that will serve our uh, 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 Louisiana government school and the residents and community for years to come check in. And this is the kind of uh, work that I, I have brought in terms of lobbying efforts to make these things a reality. You was, know? That a, was that right? a major need for the school? Of course, check it. We, that Louisiana school is already over 1,000 students, you know. I mean, this is daily needed computer lab, you name it, classrooms, check it. But these are the kind of work that I have bring, and this is just one. You don't even want to go take one people. We need to go visit the factory at Carmelita for making you understand the millions of dollars on the ground already, check it, in investment, in equipment, in, in buildings, infrastructure. That will create hundreds of jobs for Belizeans. Tell me who in Orange Rock, which representative for time immemorial have brought an industry to this, to this tongue of ours? Nobody, check it. But I have done that. I have done that because I... I Really work hard for we people, man. And these are the kind of things, you know, two, two years from now when you have so much people already well-established and thing. I mean, it will drive that economy. That, that Lee Carmelita will transform itself like never before because of that smear factory that is there huh? and all the, the, the development that is taking place in new high school, you know. Check it. These are the kind of commitment where I stand on, you know. And, and with my integrity and that checking, I think that definitely the East will move to even greater heights. And that is why we need a new mandate. That is why I'm asking people to, to give me that continued support because I feel 
There's a lot more that I can contribute. I want to see the East really stand out in our throughout the entire country. And really, Cheki, great things have come to the East under my leadership. And like I've, I said it on, on Love FM uh, yesterday when they interviewed me. Man, you could put the, the 30 years together, last 30 years, Cheki, add that up with both PUP and UDP representatives in the East and put all the work together, add the, up all the, all the work that they have done. And you compare that to these five years that I've been there, Cheki. So and the difference you, is clear. <clears throat> that makes you huh? um, real confident going into this election? Of course, Cheki, of course. I think, you know, any idea, people know what I stand for. I'm here to work. Of course, in politics, there's a lot of issues, you know. Uh, some people not happy because maybe you couldn't satisfy every little thing that you, you, you're there. But people could will tell you I have been honest and tried my best for people. I know say we don't make mistakes here and there, you know, check it because we are humans. I can't say that I, I could satisfy everybody 100%. I can't say that every land people that comes to my office get service because there's it, they're not an easy task, you know, but we are trying. That is the underlining thing there that I've been trying, I've been working, and we have assisted so many people. And the work never ends. And we continue to work for these things, Sheki. My heart there for the people of Orange Rockies, I remain committed. I remain with that fire in me to get things done for this division. And that, that to me, you know, that is, I put on everything out there. Because at the end of the day, man, I want to know that I have contributed to the development of this East Division because it was long neglected, Sheki. You know, and, and I just want to make people know that I'm there with you. I've been there with you always trying the best that I can. Uh, and, and definitely, Cheki, I have the confidence that the people of Orange Rockies will give me that support come election day. Well, Minister, it's time for us to close. Maybe we'll touch a little bit. Um, a little well, we'll even then. show some of the pictures. I think we should show some of the pictures of the, the kind of things we do. Well, we have the, uh, we continue with the drum project. We talked okay. about that. I don't know if them boys show some of them pictures. Yeah, the drum I project. think the road works. So we do that Palmar right now, you know. Yes, we have we have a number of people who have come out and, and giving out this support to us right now. And so people are volunteer? Not, well, I am paying a stipend to some people, and, okay. and they are coming out and working. But I'll tell you, check a lot of people coming out to us right now and really with a push hard in the villages in terms of Palmar and other places to reach out with the drums likewise. And like I said, we have a lot in terms of uh, uh, people who have been asking for these things and we are trying to get it out as quick as possible. Young but people, they work. Of course, young people and all over Cheke and, and the work never ends in terms of that. And I think it goes a long way to assist people. So that is something we had the road works in, in Palmar. You know, we, we, we dumped a number of streets there. We so opened up a number of streets, yes. Okay. So, you know, and, and this work, people might say, oh, the Bikai election, check it, year wrong. I As soon as we get the equipment, I am the one who have did my best in terms of trying to get lobby with public works uh, and, and fight with them many times. Mr. Jones could tell you, me and he always mm -hmm. catch on them because I'm fighting for the people around you, yes, you know, yes. and we try to get things going for people out there. So the work never ends in these things, but because, we, you know, we have to be real. We have a lot of white mile roads in our tongue. We have uh, in the villages, they have to be maintained. And I've tried to catch up and, 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 and keep these roads as best as possible maintained, you know. Hello, good morning, Sugar City Morning Show. Hi, good morning, sir. Good morning. I Well, I just wanted to call and say that thank you for the fabric drinks that are being distributed. Okay. Well, it's very helpful at the moment because, you know, here at the village in Palmar, it's, it's costly to give the garbage if they are not being um, popped or being in the, in, in the right garbage bins, right? Okay. Right. So it's, it's coming very, very helpful, and I'm very thankful for that. All right. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Carla. Sometimes you don't know how far the things yes, go. Yes, man. It goes a long way for our community because I tell you, Cheki, I could tell you. If you put garbage out there in our bag, you will bet the dog will tear that up and you're, you're going to mess out there. That's true. And it assists the people from town council who, who go pick up garbage that they could just, you know, reach into the drum and, and pull yeah. out this garbage, you know. And we ask people to bag these things. It's 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 important to help. To. So definitely, um, 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 check it. So these are the, some of the works that we continue to do. And it's a work always in progress. I always tell my staff, man, work. Work is out there, check it. You just have to get up, step out, and you can know that there's a tremendous amount of work out there. 
uh, uh, definitely you want to help everybody, but the reality is, Shaky, you have to prioritize where what is in the best interest of our community. And these are the kind of things that I do. Like I said, tremendous work needs to be done in Carmelita, and we'll be reaching out there right now because uh, people have been asking me in terms of the, the, the new development area that we have done. These roads so need to be accessible because, you know, when the weather comes, the, the yeah, mud is rough. But that's once true. we dump these roads, they'll be accessible to people to build their homes. Yeah. Hello, good morning, Sugar City Morning Show. Hello, I just want to tell the minister, thank you for fixing the sandy field. Now the kids can go have fun there, and then my kids want to go every day and all. That's healthy <laughs> for them. Thank you very much, minister. Yeah. All right, sure, man, no problem. That's not like yeah. one day when you grow up, minister, and Mary go wrong, come, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> Everybody want to go. But that sandy field look nice, man. Yeah. I really feel good about it, and definitely I think it will go a long way for sports. Whenever we could get sports back up, because you know, right now, yeah. with this, you know, we, the Aragon's Christmas Cup was. was what are you in a prime right now? Why, right now, we're in a thing for two. Yeah, but true. Um, but I it's guess good it that you respect the protocols. And no, man, we have to, we have to, but definitely that is something that I want to will, will continue because I think it's very healthy for our community. And these are the kind of things, Chucky. You, you say, I discussed a lot of the major things, and we have a lot more things that I didn't even remember on a whole, because every mm -hmm. time, check it, every day, every week, every month, something is being done for our community. You know, and, and that is my commitment, and I, and, and I do these things, check it, because I, I really care, you know, I really care, and I, sometimes I wish I was a millionaire, a billionaire, well, I mean, I give away all of that money, you understand me, check it? Uh, yeah, yeah. But, you know, it is what it is, and, and, and um, that in a day, I think that, um, we have done well for our community, and I feel good about it, Chucky. You know why? You know, I got a call. I got a text, actually, from a young person who sometimes you not know, get these texts every day. And somebody said, Mr. Aragon, I just want to thank you for the, all the support you have given me throughout my high school. Wow. Without you, I would not be able to go to school because we help people with education. And, and you know, I feel good about the, all those things because you don't get those calls or texts every day. Yeah. You know, people tend to get the help, and that's it. They figure that's it. For me... Education has always been important, and I and I and I can tell you this, Shaky. A lot of people, even some people say, "Boy, where you the help them? You know, they don't vote for you." It is not about that for me. You know, it's about education. Is for me, is about building our nation, empowering our people. You have to help everybody as best as you can. You have to try. That is your 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 your, your how would I put it to the bear. That is my commitment that I have to do. Yeah. You know, Shaky, and and I felt good about these things. You know. Hello, good morning, Sugar City Morning Show. Hello, good morning. Um, okay, I wanted to call on the... Um, you are live on the Sugar City Morning Show. Okay, hello, hello, good morning. I just wanted to applaud Mr. Aragon for all of the good work that he is doing in the East. And uh, I also wanted to add that I am a first-time voter, and you know for whom I am voting right here in the East, right? I am voting for Minister Aragon because he has been helping, helping everyone. And even though he doesn't post it on uh, Facebook, everything he does, he's always helping people. Like, for example, food assistance, school and tuition assistance, spons sponsorships towards um, youth activities, infrastructure from bridges to lobbying for the expansion of the Louisiana government school, for example, the Sandy Field Project, too. And, uh, um, I have gone through well by that area, by the Sandy Field, and I have always seen people, well, youth playing right there and, uh, you know, in the, um, using the infrastructure that they have provided. And I am very thankful to Mr. Aragon because we can see he is a man of integrity. And uh, he doesn't just deliver promises, but he is a man that works for it. And I am really thankful to Mr. Aragon for all the work that he has done. He has helped so much people over, he has been giving over 800 pantry bags a month. And even though he doesn't post it, he has been working. So I would, well, Mr. Aragon definitely has my vote. Yeah. Thank you. Sometimes I remember yeah. all the things we've done, too. We do a lot, Jackie. And my thing is like this, like I've always said, you know, I feel good when I know that we have touched somebody's lives, you know. And I feel bad when we miss them too, you know, because sometimes we don't know everything what happens in in our community, you know. But 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 that any idea, check it, the people of Orange Rockies could rest assured that my commitment is steadfast and I'm here for the best interests of our people 
and our country. That is first and foremost. I've learned that because a long time from when all my training that I've gotten in the police, the military, you know, my commitment, you know, to the how my old man and my old lady had raised me. Mm -hmm. You know, all of these things I think come towards uh, 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 me looking at what is in the greatest interest of our community because I know they check it. This country and our people, that's all we have, you know. All we have as Belizeans, and, and we must do our part to, to ensure that we carry out uh, uh, and move this country to greater heights, you know. And every generation will have that responsibility. This is true, our true, time yeah. right now in terms of doing what we have to do. But I'm sure down the road, other people will come up. And I want to know that when somebody else come up, man, they, they have a good start and they could continue with, with what is happening, you know. Hello, good morning. Sugar City Morning Show. Cheki. Yes, sir. Mr. Agon. Yes. Yes, sir. Um, I was watching the show, and I want to applaud you for being straight up. Because Akala said, will you be doing the road to Champagne Ridge? And you were honest enough to say, not right now, but after, in the next time, we will do it. That's being straight up, and I respect you for that, and I hope the people of Jampai Ridge respect you. Because were it a PUP, than a bearer, they have say, yes, man, you'll get it, you'll get it. And they have been known, I recall, for the, 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 the road from Yoke Creek to Blue Creek. I remember for three manifestors, they, they said they would do it. At the last time, they even put up a sign the construction will start, and the company will do it. And after they win, they just move the sign. Secondly, I remember the San Esteban Bridge. By election, they put the iron at the riverside, the bridge will start. And after the election, they move no bridge, and the iron is gone. So I respect you, and I hope the people of Champagne respect your honesty. Because it proves you're a man of your word, and if you said after the election we'll have it, then that's the, that's the way it's supposed to be. Anyway, I just want to make a comment. If I'm a PUP, I may say yes, man, yes, man, and that's it. Yeah. Well, thank you, Carla, and I just want to add to that, you know, check it. In a way, there's they're not like if you don't want it to happen. It has to do, it has to be uh, budgeted there. You have to find and allocate the funds for it to happen. You know, if we had money there right now, man, I, that would be the first place I'd appear, if you, you, you know, because I understand the importance of that uh, that road. That road, and only for here to, from Orange Rock to Champagne Ridge, you know, it is a road that takes you to the airstrip. Uh, uh, and, 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 you know, tourism has always been big with us uh, yeah, in terms of, of this country mm -hmm. and what we want to see for Orange Rock. So we have to put the kind of infrastructure that will support these things. But like I said, Chiki, the, the these are the kind of things that, um, that, that, needs to be done they can't get done they never get done this five years and, and you know the the reason is not because we don't want to eat not because we don't have an interest in it it is because these things require funding and these fundings have to come they're not like when you raise a hundred thousand you, you you know these are in the hundreds of thousands you know i mean but if you could get other projects then we could find a way for do it with the community etc but some of these things are a little too bigger than i could handle personally on a personal level in terms of seeking cooperation that but it has to come from government it has to come from some loan or something or some some uh, 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 grant that comes to the country but people can rest assured that i have been championing for this and i will continue to champion for that and the other roads in the orange rock east division hello good morning sugar city morning show good morning Chaki. good morning sir and good morning to the minister yeah good morning good morning sir it is will free you Okay. Bye. Good morning. We what's up, we? Bye. I want to congratulate the minister on a very successful completion in his first term in government. Because we can see the development all over the Orange East constituency. Now, whereas his opponent is going in this election as a failure and a proven failure. You just walk around the town and you see the overgrown grass and the prickles literally take you over the sidewalks. Garbage is not collected on time. And go by the riverside, 
Remember the tourism center? Yeah. That is an eyesore. They stole the windows, the doors, the bathroom facilities, everything. And now this man neglects a regional town, a provincial area. The people of Rangel yes, are intelligent and they know better between a failure and a proven leader, which is the Star Aragon. So I just hope that on the 11th of November, Orangeard East does the correct thing and re elect a proven leader and ignore the proven failure that is Kevin Bernard. Thank you. Hey, Minister, yeah. we go back to nomination. Do you want to show some of the pictures sure, before we leave? Sure. That has been a historic one. I think so. You know, we can only if I got another one like that. You know, in yeah. terms of where we don't have the hype, but you know, yeah. no, no kind of bashment yesterday, no kind and of. And I parades. tell you, we missed that Chiquitel. Trust me, <laughs> and people wanted to come out. You know. Yeah. So if we can get some pictures of um, that nomination yesterday, when yeah. Uh, okay. So. Those are the These are us walking, myself and the, um, the, the our nominees. So no? you never declared no crowd? No, we never had crowd check it. We had people all around when we follow, like, who wanted to, to come in. Like, yeah, they know. want something, you know? Yeah. But then I did. This is the just us out there uh, walking. And, and we, we walked we walk to the nomination, to the education office for nomination, and we we walked back to our office, you know? But definitely, check it, I mean... You know, you know when nomination yes, come. You know yes. when we come out. We Especially come out coming big. from Liberty Avenue. Of course, you know, and and you know uh, the hype that I uh, like. I said, man, you know, <laughs> last night I got to bed and I said, shucks, you know, just miss the hype. I tell you, yeah. <laughs> you know, but um, anyway, it is what it is because we have to think of the greater good of our community and we have to put that ahead of the at the game. You know, yeah. any day we're going to the, the elections and thing, and I want to know that under my leadership, check it. I always do the right thing. And that is why Cheke will repeat it here. And I, I said it on Love FM. Likewise, at the same interview here that, that you're seeing, uh, where I spoke about the fact that me, uh, me in personally, Cheke, I have a conscience here. It's hard for me to think otherwise. You know? I guess that's the way I'm wired, you know, but maybe yeah. you'll go. Hello, good morning. I want, I want definitely red on. I want big up the man where he starts. You, you, you're the one right now, sir. Go ahead. Hey, hello. Yeah, go ahead, Carla. Go ahead. You're, you're on the air. I want to be you, Mr. Aragon. Yeah, okay. Continue. Um, because he's the one good man. Whether he got good leadership for the UDP, I, I, I thought... Hello. Yes, go ahead. Go ahead. We're listening. I, I, I thought to be your UDP. And I view Mr. Aragon and I the Bautista. Okay. Bautista. And and I love you boss and you are winner, you are put it for Chihuahua. All right. Thank you, Carla. We appreciate and that. Then, and then I big you up over and over. Okay. All, All right, thank you. Thank you, thank so you Carla. You must be um you must be confident and honored to have six persons putting that confidence yes, in you and yes, endorsed you yes. yesterday for the nomination uh, day, right? Of course, Chiki. And you know why? It's all about the community, Chiki. And that's why I say it again. And I, and I, I think it is important because, Chiki, you know, the hardship is out there, Chiki. You go visit people out there, especially in the village, in the rural areas. You Even in our own town, we have people who, who are ailing, you know, whether they're sick one, tragedy befall them. Where one, one family member sick and watch people have it hard, Chiki. You know, and I cannot justify myself because I know the situation, especially with the COVID, both at the, at the national and you could see it at the international level too, or the regional level. You imagine down low, low locally, down way down there where people have it hard already before COVID. You imagine where some of them they got you. And, and that is the reality. Some people don't know about these things because. They are public servants and they get their money regular, etc. So things is okay. But there are other people out there. Check in, and that is why this election, people always, and I have a lot of my campaigners and, and a lot of my people were supposed to go, oh, PUP put flag, PUP put them big banners. When you do that, when why are you not matching up on this and that? And I look at them and I tell them, listen, I can't, not because somebody run go do that, I go and do that too. For me, 
I have to think of everything I do. And I say one of the biggest thing, thing and, and challenges I have right now is the amount of texts I get every day. The amount of people I meet every day out there and I see their hardships, man. You know, what conscience I have for go put up my big sign, my big picture up there, and, and, and think we cost $5,000 every whop of them big sign and big billboards, you know? Uh, and then you look at each flag with a $10 and then they put it all over up, up in the tongue. Check it. You add that up, it is a lot of money. How do I justify myself or sleep at night knowing that I'm okay, but other people, they take one lick, and then when they ask me for money, me no got, but I got them big sign up there. No, make no sense. It doesn't make no, no sense uh, as a leader. You understand? And that is why I have not engaged in that this year. And I, and I tell you, I have to hold strong to it. Why? Because I got people in my own camp, in my, my support. And where are I going? You got to do this. You got... Man, I have to have a conscience. I don't have a wealth of money like that. But the money that I have, I want to put it to good use here, right now during this pandemic. And that is the way I'm able to assist some people. And I do that, check it, because I know that the money is well spent there with the people who need the help than for me to have my picture on a big billboard costing $5,000. Man, that don't do me no justice. I don't need any kind of thing there. You, you, you know, I'm not running for, for, for in terms of who have more picture up on, on billboards or who have more flag on post. Man, that, that, I am bigger than that because at the end of the day, it is about the people I serve. And that is my kind of the commit, that is a, that is a part and represents a part of my commitment to the people of this division, the people of my country. And that's why, check it, when you look at who I am and what I stand for, you look at the ICJ, me no waste time, me going to cabinet and telling, I believe this is the right thing and we should all go together and support the ICJ. Huh? When you look at other things in terms of, of where I stand, you know, when it comes to Patrick Faber and Jan Saldiva, me no make no, and I'm not afraid for stand. Uh, and make a decision. And I stood with Patrick Faber in the thin, in the bad, and the good in terms of when we win and when we lose, I was there. And I know falter, me not change, me not jump here, me not jump. Why? I, because I do what I believe in. I stand with what I always think is right, and I have to put our people and country first. That is who I am, Chucky. Mm -hmm. I don't have to wait and I have to decide, oh, uh, follow this because they tell me follow that. I know a man which I believe I have enough sense to do what is right for my people. Huh? They're not like in here, right in Orange Rock, you have um, Brisenio who have to tell these people what to do. The, the, he manipulates people. And nobody could come and do me that. I stand for our people and country first, always. Hello, good morning. I want to talk from the radio again. Go ahead, sir, go ahead. I proud of uh, Mr. Aragon. Mr. Ragon, hello. Yes, sir. Go ahead, sir. Um, I proud of you, boss, and, and I beat you up because you're the one kind leader. And be, people like you will never find in Belize City. And I proud of you, Papa, and I love you. And you want to get beat up, and you want to win again over and over. Okay, bye. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Minister, no closing yeah, remarks. What's your message to him? Um, to the nation of Belize in supporting the United Democratic Party and to the um, residents of Orange Walk East leading up to election because, like you say, you cannot be around much. Well, we are, we'll move around as much as we can, Chiki. But my thing is this. You know, a lot of us, I think, on, on, on our personal lives, I think sometimes we tend to, to worry about what I have gotten. Oh, or they're not fix me up here yet. Oh, or uh, ask this little favor and never come true. You know? And it's not about, like, the, there's a saying we say, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. You know? And, and I will tell you, sometimes that is very true. Because you try help, but the end of the day, you know, work out. And, and so I say, oh, you never helped me and this and that. Despite all of those little things, I call it little things. It's big things for people, but it's little things in the, in the, in the greater scheme of things. Why? Because at the end of the day, right now going to an election, we should never think about what it, where I never get, or I come with this or that. Listen, it is, we have to look at the greater picture of what is best for this country and our people. We have to look at that. We have to put those things because we could always get these things. We could always accomplish these things. But we, what we will never accomplish is if we make the wrong decision on election day. You understand me, Cheki? If we have to look at what is best for this country, 
And that means that when we go to the elections uh, on the 11th of November, we need to cast that vote uh, uh, for what will be the best government or the right option for this country right now. And I will tell you, Cheki, when you look at everything and put it on the table, Cheki, man, the only option and the right government at this point in time for this country and people is the United Democratic Party. No two ways about it. No two ways about it. And you could turn this any way wrong, upside down. At the end of the day, that is what is the best option right now. It is for the United Democratic Party to be returned to office. And I say that because that is the truth. And of course, you will have people who say, oh, this and that. Well, I'm not here to say that the UDP is the perfect party, you know. I don't say that this and that. I say, of course, there have always been issues, man. But at the end of the day, we have to be real as Belizeans, and we have to ensure that we put the best government in office. And definitely, the PUP is by a mile and a half away than the worst party ever at this point in time under the leadership of Gianni Brissanio. No two ways about that, Cheki. So if we, as responsible Belizeans, if we are to look towards what will be what, what we want to see as a future for this country and people, man, we have to make the sober decision and vote for the United Democratic Party. Uh, because it is this party who has championed the cause of the masses, has championed the cause of the poor, always checking. And you could look at it in history. You could look at when we, the, the UDP had to come back and fight for the people and brought this country back up. You could look at all these things. You could look at the development that this country has brought, the, the party has brought to this country. Huh? Not perfect, but at the end of the day, me and you are sleep better, the country will sleep better, knowing that we have the United Democratic Party there right now. Because Gianni Brisenio and that bunch of people who were part and parcel of the worst corrupt era in the history of this country are the same people asking to be returned to office right now. I don't see who in their logical minds would want to do that, Chiki. Huh? Because certain things that they have done to us are unforgettable and unforgivable. Uh, but they don't have no shame, you know. They have no shame. They put their name back for running the office. And that is why the PUP has not won in the last three elections. And that is why they will not win this election either. That is how I feel, Cheki. And I'm asking the public out there, listen, let's do the right thing for this country. Because at the end of the day, if we make the wrong decisions, we will have to live with that for the next five years. And sometimes... These decisions, we pay the price for many, many years, just like the Super Bowl, you know. And your message to Orange Walk, please, leading up to the elections. Leading up to the elections, well, listen, decisions have to be made, but I'm asking you to give me that support because with me, you can know that you will have integrity, you'll have honesty, you'll have a hard worker, and more importantly, you have someone who is committed to making Orange Walk East move to greater heights. We have done the work. We want to continue the work because we want to see a most progressive Orange Walk East division, Orange Walk, and a better Belize. And that you will have under my leadership as usual. No? Thank you very much, Minister. Minister Ragon will be here next week, Thursday. Again, tune in tonight to the East Radio as well. Tonight, 7.30, Minister? Right, right. 7.30 tonight, to truth be told tonight, that will be live right here on North Division Channel 10. And right after that program, this show will be repeated. And we have repeat of Channel 7 News today at 12. Then the hot news coming up at 6 o'clock. We say good morning to the wonderful residents of Orange Wild East. My name is Robert Cheke Osha. Thanks to Nadir to Rahim and to Sam. Folks, have yourself a wonderful day. Tomorrow, we'll be having Tropigas early, and after that, we have RC1 and Carlos Cetina with the show continuing, um, Get to Know Carlos Cetina. So early in the morning, we have Mr. Castillo from Tropigas. Then we'll be having RC1 and Carlos Cetina at 8. So have yourself a wonderful day. Keep it locked to Channel 10 right here. Norte Vision, Channel 10. On election day, let's make the right choice. Re elect and know your Aragon Jr. With you always, leadership that works, representing Orange Walk East. Because our future matters, not even a question who may vote in me. You already know we voting for the UDP. Cause they are the best one in the driver's seat. So I put the
your ex right there, so we're the son of the east. Yeah, we talk in the who? Aragon, Aragon, Aragon. We talk in the who? Aragon, Aragon. The number one, we talk in the who? Aragon, Aragon. One and only son out here of the east. Yeah, we voting for Aragon, he quarried me. Voting Aragon, he's the number one. Yeah, voting Aragon. Get the job done, yeah. And we're so blessed. Hello, the Aragon bring progress. Hard working, not in a no mess. Hello, the Aragon show the boy, yes. Leadership that works. Tell your Aragon, don't come to play. Put the people first. Tell your Aragon, after we are yeah. You could have a your poor. Tell your Aragon, still on the one in the door. One vote, two vote, three vote, four. I know of you, give him plenty more. Be hard work, evident. Humble, genuine, and intelligent. When the people weak, him do his strength. Hello, you're not afraid to go to show the help. Hello, yo, push the youth and the sports. Push the jobs and the roads. People first and the party after. Cause our future matter. Aragon, Aragon, Aragon. We talk in who? Aragon, Aragon. Number one, we talking about who? Aragon, Aragon. One and only son out here of the east, yeah. We voting for Aragon, he go and repeat. On election day, for the lawyer, Aragon. Representing Orinjwa East. You will be on the line. Because our future matters. Remains steadfast in his commitment of delivering on his pledge to the people of Orinjua East. As a result, Palmar Village is receiving much needed attention. The main street that passes through the village, which has been eroded due to rains and use over time, has been upgraded by your area representative and the government of Belize. Street works will be ongoing in the area. Honorable Elodio Aragon and the government of Belize. Leave 